So a Muslim cleric arrested during a counterterrorism raid in Great Britain doing one-on-one uh, -on -one with Sean Hannity last night. Listen to the imam talk about his views on the kidnapping and the killing of Western hostages. If you look at what the people are saying who are holding these hostages, they are willing to exchange them. They are talking about the fact that there's no stability and security in Muslim countries because of the U.S. and British foreign policy. So I think if you look at the whole picture, you will find, in fact, there's, a, there's another story. And until we hear that story, I'm afraid well, we, we cannot heard. make an One guy was an aid worker that went to Syria to help innocent children. I hardly think he was a guy that deserved to have his head chopped off because you believe in a caliphate. Well, you know, as I say, I don't take my, my news from Fox News or the BBC. If you look at the people on the ground, I think you'll find that they have a completely different, different story. Well, KT McFarland's former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense under President Reagan, Fox News National Security Analyst, and good morning, good morning. to you. He's the guy calling for the bombings. Mm -hmm. He's the guy not putting on the jacket, is he, KT? No, he's a nasty piece of work. First of all, when he was a college student, he was a womanizing, hard-drinking bad boy. Well, now he's a, a religious leader, and he's inciting jihad. He is convincing particularly young males to go fight, go put on the suicide vest, go fight, go kill, go behead. But guess what? He's not putting on any suicide vest. He's holding their coats while they do it. So he is inciting others to do things he would never do himself. That interview came from London last night. It aired here on the Fox News Channel with Sean Hannity, as I mentioned. How many jihadists do the Brits believe are in their country? I talked to the head of MI5 a couple of years ago, and he said they feel that there are roughly 2,000 at any given time who are radicalized. They could go operational at any moment. In other words, at any moment, they could participate in some kind of a terrorist attack. And they watch all 2,000 of them. I've got to assume that since ISIS has been recruiting in Britain, they've gone from Britain, they've gone to fight in Syria and Iraq, gone back to Britain, that that number is And This is something that Dave Cameron, the, the prime minister, is very worried about. The other thing the imam told Hannity, there's nothing called suicide in Islam. There's using your body in the battle against the enemy. That's the argument that Hezbollah and Hamas is used against Israel now for decades. Absolutely. That's the argument where they've said, look at Israel, you're killing our innocent women and children and not saying, well, we've put our innocent women and children right in front of us, right? And we've put our, our rocket launchers um, on, the, on the rooftops of schools. We've put our depots, our arms depots in hospital. Our headquarters is in the basement of a hospital. They have intentionally put their civilians in the way of, of getting attacked and killed. So they can then go to the world and say, look, we're the good mm. guys. You know, in the meantime, you've got this general talking about ISIS changing its mm -hmm. tactics on the ground, which you would expect, right? Sure. From a military standpoint, if you're getting hit from the air, you're going to change the way you assemble. The question I think is a very important, KT, mm -hmm. is understanding the distinction of this whole coalition that's supporting what's happening in Syria. You have four or five countries doing that. Right. And those who are supporting action in Iraq, which has suddenly become the good war again. <laughs> How did this happen? Well, I, th that's the problem with any kind of putting together coalition. Some will fight in one, some will fight in the other. But I think the reality of it is that although it is a good thing that we are bombing ISIS in Syria and in Iraq, and it is a good thing that Sunni moderates have not joined us in the bombing, nobody is going to show up when it comes to putting combat forces on the ground, which is the only way you ultimately in, destroy. In both countries, you're in saying? In both countries, in I don't In Syria think. and Iraq, yeah. no country puts forces on the ground. Well, the president's plan is in Syria, we're going to identify some moderate Arabs and then we're going to take them from Syria, we're going to put them in Saudi Arabia, build a base for them, we're going to train them, we're going to equip them and then we're going to stand them up to go back to Syria to fight Assad, Al-Qaeda and ISIS. That's just not going to happen. And then secondly, in Iraq, he said the Iraqi government, the Iraqi army will stand up to them when even the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has said they're only 50 percent combat ready. And when ISIS confronted them, they dropped their weapons, took off their uniforms and ran. Now, the point I think that the reason I think you have to drive this point home is that the White House will always talk about the coalition, the coalition. What is the coalition willing to do? So far, it doesn't look like a whole lot. That's right. Humanitarian assistance, yes. Bombing in some limited cases, and that's good. But as far as the really hard part, which is to put Muslims on the ground fighting other Muslims in combat situations, I think it's unlikely to happen. So I think in three months' time, the president's going to have a choice. Either we finish the bombing campaign and come home, we put big American boots on the ground, or, and I think this is the most likely, the president turns to Iran and says, you guys finish mm. off ISIS. And then Iran will say, the price is we want you to look the other way while we continue our nuclear weapons program. Wow, we'll watch all those options. Thank you, Katie McFarland, Thank you, here in New York. You got it. Martha.